investments and today we're covering unit 11 and 12 and um, basically unit 11 is mainly a theory and unit 12 is evaluation of bonds. Okay, so I'm just going to wait for a minute and then I'm going to get started with the next, with the first slide. Okay, we are good. We can go, I think, 44 people. Okay, thanks, John. Um, you'll assist me with the chat and just communicate with me if there's any uh, questions from uh, from Lance. Yeah, 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 I'll be watching the chat. Okay, thanks. Okay. So we have the introduction to bonds, right? So let's start off with what is a bond with the definition, right? A bond is a long term loan with fixed interest payments, right? It's an agreement between an investor and usually the government or a private company, right? So bonds are usually traded on a platform called the bond exchange of South Africa, right? And then you get different types of bonds, right? So the first one which you'll hear quite frequently of is a government bond, right? And a government bond is where we get what we've been talking about in the last few lessons called risk-free rate. So if I can start off with our first interaction and ask you guys to maybe post for me in the chat, why do you guys think that a government bond is risk free? Why do you think it will be a good um, a good example of a risk free day? So I'll just give you guys a moment to maybe post in the chat. Um, why do you guys think a government bond is a risk free rate? And in the meantime, I can just talk to you about um, municipal bonds is bonds issued by the municipality. Um, so basically, this is how bonds work. Why is the government issuing bonds and why is the municipality issuing bonds? Because they need to lend, they need to borrow money from, um, they need to borrow money uh, for infrastructure or for big projects. And then they will return this money with um, interest, of course, the fixed interest payments back to the investor, right? So the municipality, they always have um, big projects such as roads or road signs or um, something to do with water, electricity, anything that the municipality wants to invest in. They issue bonds to the public and the public borrows them the money and they uh, return it obviously once they are done or with a um, and with a fixed interest on that bond right and then you get corporate bonds where private companies also issue bonds as a form of a loan for the company so you get different types the main one you'll hear about all the time is government bonds and this is where we get our risk free rate. The interest on a government bond is risk free. So I wanted to find out from you guys. I don't know if anyone managed to post in the chat. Um, yes. Can you see the chat, Yumna? Uh, no, I, I okay. you know, I'm struggling I'll, to see the chat. No, but, don't worry. I'll, uh, tell you, I'll tell you what's in the chat. Uh, there is the okay. who said the uh, to the, your first question because the government can print it, their own money if necessary. <laughs> okay, that that's um, that's why it's risk free. Then the Tabo says the guaranteed return. Yes, yes. So, Sir so Tabo, you on the right uh, uh, level, you on the right uh, track. 
because uh, it's your get your your money is guaranteed, right? So with a risk free rate, you're not going to get a high rate like another investment uh, where you bear the risk of losing out your money. A government bond is you guaranteed to get your money at the end of the term along with interest payments. So the rate won't be that high, but you are guaranteed your capital investment and you are guaranteed interest. There's no way that they will default. So that's how a government bond is risk free. You're always going to get your money and you're always going to get the interest. However, the risk free rate you'll see it's always not a very um, high return because it's risk free, right? So now we're going to be using these terms throughout this um, presentation where we speak about the investor, right? This is the person who is taking out money from his bank account and giving it to the bond issuer, right? So if I take out my pointer, Okay, so here's the investor. He takes out his money from his bank account and he gives it to the bond issuer, which is the government or the company or the municipality. They need this money, right? And what they do is that because they're borrowing the money, they pay interest regularly in the form of coupons back to the investor, right? So that's how um, this is just a nice flow diagram to show you how the you know, who is the investor? Who is the bond issuer? The investor takes out money from his bank account, gives the lump sum to the bond issuer because we're going to talk about the bond issuer all the time. And I don't want you to get confused. And then the bond issuer, he pays interest for borrowing this money in the form of coupons back to the investor. And at the end of the term, he pays all the capital back to the investor as well. Right. So. Now let's go through the bond fundamentals right so the bond fundamentals are the basics of bonds right so as we go through this um unit 11 these are the terms which you're going to hear of and um these are the terms you're going to hear of and this is what they mean right so the principal value is the amount that the investor issued right so if someone borrowed from you 10 million rand, it's a 10 million rand bond, right? Normally, um, the future value and the principal value is always the same because we'll be working with future value or par value. Principal value, future value, par value, all the same term, right? It's the basic, it's the face value of the bond. How much money was put into this bond, right? Then earlier I spoke about coupon rate. So coupon rate is the payment, the interest, right? Which is a fixed amount calculated on the principal value. So you'll take your principal value times by the interest rate or coupon rate to get your payment, right? So that's your payment. Then you get your term to maturity, which is your period, right? We'll always see N which is your period. So it can be a 10 year bond. It can be a 20 year bond, a five year bond. That's your term to maturity, which is your N, right? Then you get your yield to maturity, right? Which is your interest rate, right? So this interest rate takes into account changes in the price as well as the interest getting paid, right? So the coupon rate and the yield to maturity are two different aspects right the yield to maturity calculates the total return on the bond whereas the coupon rate is just based on interest payments right and then you get the market value what is someone willing to buy a bond like this for uh, on the market today right how much can you sell this investment for which is your market value and um Usually when we are calculating bonds, you'll always be asked, the calculation will ask you to calculate yield to maturity and we'll be asked to calculate market value, which is your present value. How much, what is the price of a bond today? So these are your bond fundamentals and it's very important that you know these fundamentals. Um, it's very important that you know these fundamentals. Um, as we're going through these, this section. OK, 
Okay, so like you guys, uh, like the topics we've covered is that every investment bears a risk, right? So the risk determines the return. So now here with bonds, there is always a risk because we are dealing with interest rates. So the first risk that we will talk about is the interest rate risk, right? So bond prices are interest rate sensitive. So the price of the bond, how much you can buy this bond on the market today, it's affected by the current prevailing interest rates, right? So it's interest rate sensitive, right? And they have an inverse relationship, which means if interest rates go up, the price of the bond comes down. And if interest rates come down, the price of the bond goes up, right? So interest rate risks, with interest rate risk, we have two types of risks which stem from it, which is the price risk, because like I just explained to you that due to interest rate risk, the price of the bond is affected, right? Um, and this risk is only relevant if the bond is being sold on the black market. Like, you know, a person who is buying the bond and reselling it on the market before it matures. And then you have reinvestment risk, right? Which usually cancels out because when interest rates drop, the coupon reinvests at a lower rate, but the lower rate causes the price to increase and vice versa. So reinvestment risk if you're losing out on interest payments, you're gaining on the price. If you're losing out on the price, you're gaining on the interest rate. So these are the two risks which come from the interest rate price and reinvestment, right? And then going down at the bottom is um, all other risks which affect bonds, which is your credit risk, um, the credit worthiness of the bond issuer. So like, you know, a corporate company, you check their credit worthiness. Are they good payers? Uh, if they're good payers, then um, they'll offer, it will give you a lower return. If they are a bit of a high risk uh, company, they don't pay regularly, then you'll ask for, um, the investor will ask for a greater return. So ultimately, when it comes to risk, the main thing you have to remember is if the risk is higher, it means you want a better return. So when you see a high return on a bond, it means it's a bit of a risky bond. So the risk throughout this module, it doesn't change. That's how risk works. It's higher risk requires a higher return. So if you just look at these uh, few types of risk, you have yield curve risk. Um, so that means changes in the curve negatively affect the bond's value. Liquidity risk is like if the bond cannot be sold easily, then it has a liquidity risk. And then you have a call risk, uh, which is callable bonds can be called at a time um, most favorable to the issuer and reissue at a low price. So as we go through this presentation, we will be doing callable bonds and you will understand why there's a risk because um, the call, uh, the person, who's calling the bond is at an advantage because he can call the bond if it um, is favorable to him. However, then the issuer will lose out. So this is the type of risks that you get. And the reason why we're covering these risks is that usually bond theory questions are based on risk, interest rate risk, or different types of risks or the fundamentals, because you need to know these things. Um, you need to know these things in terms of bonds. OK, then you get different bond structures, right? You get coupon bonds, which is what we're going to be valuing today, right? Which is a semi annual coupon payment and face value at maturity, right? So this is what we're going to calculate today. Interest is paid every six months on the bond. And at the end of the term, you receive the face value at maturity. Then you get a different type of a bond called a zero coupon bond. So the zero coupon bond um, is um, bought at a discount and face value is redeemed at maturity. So the earnings is on capital gain. So now the face value of the bond is a thousand rand. So a zero coupon bond 
you will um, buy for 650 rand and at the end of it you will get a thousand rand and that's how your gain is so you're earning 350 rand so zero coupon bonds are quite uh, popular in i don't know if you guys have heard like sharia compliant investing where like uh, muslims do not uh, invest uh, do not invest um, in interest bearing instruments but capital gain is um, still acceptable so they will normally invest in zero coupon bonds right then we go to bonds with options which are callable bonds so we'll be going through a section called derivatives um, in unit 13 where you'll have a call and a put so call is the um, option to buy but not the obligation um, at a certain date to you know to reissue the bond so it allows the issuer to redeem the bond basically the issuer to redeem the bond at a time before maturity, right? So the person who borrowed the money, he can pay it back at a time before maturity, right? So if at the call date, the market price exceeds the call price, the bond will be called. So the call price is set and you're seeing at the market, uh, at the moment in the market, this bond is selling for 950 Rand, but if I call it now, I can pay the investor um, 900 Rand. So I save 50 Rand, so I'll call the bond, right? I can pay back 900 Rand to the investor instead of um, 950 Rand, right? So the issuer will refinance at a lower rate, okay? So we have puttable bonds as well, is the option for the investor to sell the bond prior to maturity so now the investor can also put he can sell the bond prior to maturity the investor will put the bond at a lower interest rate taking advantage of the price hike so if the interest rate is low that means the price of the bond is high and you want to sell the investor wants to sell it off at a high price right puttable bonds of a lower yield right so now you don't have so much of a risk so the yield is a bit lower and then you get convertible bonds, extendable bonds, retractable bonds, exchangeable bonds, and floating rate notes. So all these I'll advise you to go through your textbook, look at them, because it can be a possible theory question, right? So today we wanted to, you know, assist you guys in calculations. So I just cover a little bit of theory because I don't want to neglect it completely. But the main thing which we need a live conversation for is calculations, right? So I didn't get a chance to go back online to look at what financial calculators you guys have. But when doing basic bond calculations, I would advise you to use a financial calculator, right? Um, so you don't have to remember the formula. You don't have to do an equation or anything. It's very simple to use a financial calculator and uh, you can compute your answer. So the following variables will be used when using a financial calculator. You have your, on the calculator, you will see PV, which stands for present value, right? Which is the price of the bond, the current prevailing price. Would he? Luena. Okay, future value is the face value of the bond is what you're going to redeem at maturity. Future value will always be a set price, right? Then N is equal to your period or your time, right? So with, period, with regards to period, I'll give you more information in the next slide. And then your interest um, is your interest rate of the bond and your payment is your coupon payment, which is always fixed, right? Most of the time you'll be given all the information and you must solve for one variable. So here I've put on uh, two types of calculators. So this one is called Texas Instrument, which is the one which I use. And this one here is a Casio, um, which I knew of other people, other uh, students also using Casio. So if you look up here at the Texas instrument, 
You have your N, which we spoke about in the previous slide, which is your period. You have your interest rate. You have your present value. You have your payment. And you have your future value. So in this uh, calculator, which I'm very familiar with, you type in your amount and then you say N. So if N, the period is 20, I'll type in 20 and then I press N. I type in um, my interest rate and I press IY. So some calculators, what you do is um, you maybe put, you first press N and then you type in, they'll ask you for a value. So you just see how your um, calculator works, but mainly we'll be working with these five keys over here. So if every, anyone has a question on the calculators, can you please post for me in the chat and then I can answer them. Otherwise, I can move on to a practice question. Yumna, people are posting the types of calculators they have. Okay. Desiree says I have an HB 10 B11. Numbuso sharp EL738. Justice HB 10 B. Okay. E, H, e, e, L, so it's H sharp, 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 and then H, P. Okay, so let me do this. Um, then he, someone this. is asking for a bigger pointer. You need a bigger, I need a bigger pointer. Yeah, look for that, that one, which is like a laser thing. Okay. Uh, ah, that one disappears. Look for another one. Is that one fine? No, that one was disappearing. There's one which is, uh, look, that one? No, that one's too small. Let's look for another mm -hmm. one, if we can find. Maybe uh -huh. I should try arrow options. Yeah, I try arrow options. Yeah, I think that one would be even better. Okay. All right. So um, if I'm looking here at an HP calculator, it's very similar to the Casio calculator where we have our input variables here at the top. So basically, I think, um, you know, it's, it's not too difficult. Uh, you got your variables here at the top, right? And now I'm just going to research a sharp calculator. Give me one second. Okay, and then sharp is similar to the interest rate where you have your variables over here, right? So I think the input method, it's either you put in your, um, you put in your figures and then you press the variable or you press the variable and then put in your, um, your amounts, right? So I think um, all four calculators are, are simple. They have a, the other button which I needed to talk to you guys about is CPT or here on the sharp it says COMP, C-O-M-P. That's when you will compute your variable, right? So if you are looking for the interest rate, then you will, um, Put in all your other variables, then you will say compute interest rate. And over here on the Casio, um, you will just use, if I'm not mistaken, equals to. I don't see a compute on the Casio. Okay, let me have a look at the um, HP, if it has a compute. Yumna. Yes. You tell them to just to make sure they know how to use the financial calculator. Okay. All right. Otherwise, you stress yourself. There are so many financial calculators out yes. there. Yes. Okay. I just. Um, okay. So then let's go with that, right? But basically, I just wanted you to be familiar with the keys we're going to use, right? Then, with regards to bond calculations, um, when your question says semi-annual, you must do the following. Your period will times by two, but your interest rate will divide by two. 
So basically, if you have a 10 year bond, the period will be 20 years because you're getting 20 interest payments. You're getting one payment in June, one in December for 10 years, so that means you're getting 20 interest payments, right? So there's 20 periods, right? But because we're working with six months, our interest rate we divide by two because we are working with six month periods, right? So whenever you are timesing by two year, you divide by two here, right? Period and interest rate, right? You must always remember that most of your calculations, you're going to get semi-annual bonds where you will have to understand that your period is now, it's not the amount of years. This doesn't mean years. It means period, right? And this here is your interest rate. So it's your interest rate for half the year will be half the payment. OK, half the amount, right? So example, a semi-annual bond worth an interest rate of 10% in a five-year period will input as follows. Your period is 10, your interest rate is 5, right? So when and then when solving for interest for yield to maturity, remember to make payment and future value in one notation and present value in another notation. If you're going to put all your values with a positive notation, it will give you an error message. So present value, you're paying for the bond. Money is going out. We'll put it in the negative payment and future value. You're receiving that as an investor. So we'll keep it positive, right? So always make sure present value, like I put it in blue here, is in one notation, negative or positive. It doesn't matter and payment is in and future value in a different notation, right? So for my my suggestion to you is always put present value with a negative and payment and future value. You just leave it as your normal positive, right? Because like we're saying here at the bottom, because you're paying money and receiving money, so it's different inflows and outflows of money. So, they, you know, they end up, Unati, is they end up. Okay, you can go ahead, Unati. Um, let me try. Unati, you can go ahead. Nah, now the end is down. Sorry, it's a mistake. Okay, no problem. Okay, a bond pays an 8% coupon payment annually and it's 1000 Rand face value matures in four years and is selling for 967 Rand 59 cents. Oh, it seems like I put an extra point there. Calculate the expected yield to maturity of the bond. OK, so please just uh, Excuse this part, so it's 967.59, right? So now we say. Oh, sorry. About that. Um, we look at this, right? We've been given the following information, right? A bond that pays 8% coupon, right? So 8% coupons means we take 8%, we times it by 1000 Rand to get a payment of 80 Rand, right? So that's how we work out the coupon. Coupon is your coupon rate times by the face value, which gives us our payment, right? So if any, everyone can take out the calculator, you say 8% times by 1,000 Rand gives you 80 Rand, which is your payment, right? Then they say coupon payment annually on its 1,000 Rand face value. So we're going to get 1,000 Rand back after four years. So we put that in our future value. That's what we're going to get back in our future value, right? Then we say it matures in four years. So it's an annual bond, right? It says it's annual. So we put four years in our future value, right? And then it's selling for 967.59. So that's what we put at our present value, the current price. What we're going to pay for this bond is 967.59, right? So my advice to you is that you look at the question and you start from the beginning and you write down your given information. Now all the information that's given will allow us to calculate our interest rate. So once you jot down all your information in the 
correct spaces, present value, future value, payment, and period, you can now compute your interest rate, right? So if all of you guys take out your calculator and you put negative 967.59 in your present value, you put a thousand rand into your future value, 80 rand into your payment and four into your period, you compute interest rate, you must get a value of 9%. OK, so I hope everyone has the calculator out and you can give me a thumbs up if you are. You can give me a thumbs up if you are. On the same page. Yeah, lots of people. Desiree says no compute. No compute. Uh, can you try equals to Desiree? I equals to Yeah, I can see there are lots of thumbs ups. Yeah, the people are happy. Ah, this is now got 0 0.8271. Okay, so Desiree, can you check for me something which I forgot to mention to you guys? Is your calculator in end mode? You must make sure your calculator is in end mode. OK, for all these bond calculations, we never we very rarely do begin mode calculations. We do end mode calculations. All payments are received at the end. OK, so we got here um, Mutle, which is getting 18. I'm not too sure how you're getting 18 on the sharp. Compute is built in just equals to I thought as much. OK, so. Um, OK, most of you are getting 9%. Um, I'm just waiting for Desiree to get. Thank you, Desiree, yeah, 9%. Desiree, Mutle. Desiree came right. OK, Desiree, right. all right, Mutle, I hope that in our next question you can. Um, you can come right with it, but uh, you know what I'm uh, what I'm suspecting with Mutle is um, your periods are not. Um, in order, like you must have one payment per year and. Yeah, so I'll have to I'll assist you further with that Mutle, because normally you must set your calculator, clear all values, clear time value of money, clear the entire calculator before you start a calculation. Yes, yeah, so you mustn't do two payments per year. We're doing annually Mutle, so it's one payment per year. OK. So let's uh, try and calculate these two basic questions on bonds, right? This is a semi annual coupon payment. So remember what I said about semi annual, what happens to your period and what happens to your interest rate, right? And then um, I've put on a formula here, which is a simple calculation to calculate current yield, which you should also know um, for question two. So question two, you're calculating current yield. It doesn't have anything to do with the financial calculator. It's a normal calculation. Um, but the first one you are calculating um, yield to maturity for the bond for a semi annual bond. So if you can go ahead and start to calculate. Um, and then you can put your answers in the chat.
Okay, so let's check the chat out. Okay, there's one, Hopkins. Hopkins says the question number one, 6.445 to one. Okay, let's wait for a few more answers and then I can move to the um, right. next uh, slide. I'll let you know. Okay, now we have two more, two answers. Yeah, yeah, we have more answers, but we can wait a little bit more because we have two questions. Because most of you have done question number one. Question number one, okay. So, so there's Verushka, there's Kakiso, there's Anelda 6.35. Okay. Kathleen. Okay. Kuda 12.9. Kuda is a different answer, 12.9. Kensani 6.35. Okay, but um, Kuda seems to be one step ahead. Mapungule um, V. Is 12.9042. Pro, is, is it that for, for, for question number two? Is it, does it look like it's for question number two? No, no. Uh, I'm think, uh, I think most students are not uh, timesing at the end by two, but obviously we'll have to cover that because it's semi annual. But oh, okay. um, let's go to the next slide and then I'll do current yield with you guys uh, as well, right? So you see how it goes with a semi annual bond. The example I did was annual. So now with semi-annual, right, we put in our present value, it's currently selling at 950 rand, right? The future value is 1,000 rand, right? Our payment is 60 because we took the 120, our 12% coupon, we times it by 1,000 rand, we divide by 2, right? And then our period was a 10-year period, we times by 2 because it's 20 times we're getting paid, right? So we get our interest rate, which is uh, 6.45, that's right, 6.45, but you times by two to get your annual interest rate, which is 12.9%. So you must remember at the end, you get your interest rate, you times it back by two to get your annualized interest rate. So, that's how we get, we work with semi-annual bonds. So at the end, you must times back by two to give you your annualized yield to maturity. So, and the second question is your current yield, which is your annual coupon payment. Oh, it looks like I've, uh, it's supposed to be your annual coupon payment. We've got it here as your semi-annual coupon payment divided by your bond price, which is 7.5. 5%. But I think it's supposed to be 120. Please excuse my solution here. Before I post the slides, I will amend it. Over the bond price, yes. So this is, sorry, I think I uh, posted an incorrect uh, solution here. Please excuse my answer here. So it's supposed to be 120 over 950. Um, that's what you're supposed to get. Can I just... The correct answer would be twelve point six three percent annual coupon payment. Desiree, Desiree is asking, where is the bond price, please? The bond price is nine fifty. If we go back, oh, it's eight hundred. Sorry, sorry, I'm thinking about the same one. Sorry, here's the bond price, 800, and the annual coupon is supposed to be 120. One twenty over 800. The correct answer is 15%, or if you do semi-annual, it's seven and a half percent. They've done a semi-annual coupon. So you must do your annual coupon payment over the bond price, which will give you 15%. Okay.
I yes. Uh, I I have a little bit confused in payments. Okay. Payment. The one twenty yes. Okay. So with so, question one with payment. Yes. Okay. So with payment, how you get your payment? You say you, you take your face value, your face value times by your coupon rate. So if you yes, say your face value times by your coupon rate. I've you done this. One hundred and twenty. But because they told us it's a semi-annual bond, semi-annual the coupon payments. Semi-annual means we're getting paid every six months. So you get sixty rand in June which is after six months and you get 60 rand in December. So we get 60 rand per period. We have 20 periods. You see how we've times our years by two because there's 20 periods in the years. We're getting paid twice a year. So you say 120 divided by two, which will give you 60 rand per period. Are we OK there? <coughs> Uh, how are we going? Uh, this we're getting this one twenty with twelve times one thousand. Yeah, so you say twelve percent times one thousand. They told us the coupon rate is twelve percent per annum. They'll always give it to you in percentage form. Twelve percent times by the face value, which gives you your payment. Oh, okay, okay. I see my mistake. I didn't divide the uh, twelve with hundred. Yes. Okay, so 12%, you can either say 0 0.12 times 1,000, or you can use your percentage on your calculator, 1,000 times 12, and if you use your percentage, it will give you 120. Thank you. Okay. Yumna, Kenzani wants us to go through question number two. Question number two. Okay, so uh, Kenzani, question number two, uh, the current yield is your annual coupon payment over your bond price. So I'm assuming that my solution is incorrect here uh, because this is my semi-annual payment. Um, I will have to correct it and paste let's, it up. Let's on. look at the, Yumna, let's look at the question. Let's see, let's go back one slide so that we can look at the question. All right, let's go back one. Let's see, see what it looks like. Okay, just give me one second here. Sorry, uh, John, it seems like my screen is a bit frozen. Just give me a second here. Okay. Okay, is it moving? Okay, there we go. All right, so let's look at the question. We say a 6% coupon bond pays interest semi-annually and has a face value of a thousand rand its market price is 800 rand, which is what we use the bond price, and its price yield to maturity of 8%. Calculate the current yield of the bond, right? So we look here at our, our, solu our formula, which says annual coupon payment over the bond price. So our annual coupon payment is... 60 rand. 60 rand, yes. I'm sorry about that. Your, your solution is correct. Your answer is yes, correct. Your solution you is correct. It's just me who's a bit confused. But it's 60 rand is our annual coupon payment. 6% times by 1,000 rand face value, right? Over the price of the bond, which gives you 7.5%. Okay, is everyone with me? 6% coupon. Uh, Yumna. Yes. This is where I'm getting confused. Yes. Because if it says six percent coupon point pays interest semi annually. Yes. Is this six percent a semi annual one or it's an annual coupon bond? So okay. we have to divide the six percent by two or we actually multiply the six percent by two. Okay. So always do it like this. You take your coupon rate, it's always an annual rate. So you take your coupon rate times by the face value and you get your amount and then you divide by two, the way we've done here uh, in the question above. So you say 6% is 
it's not your semi-annual rate. 6% is your coupon rate. You times it by your face value, and then you divide by 2. And we get steady. Sorry? We yes, that's, that's why I'm saying that if you do that, you get 30 if you divide by 2. Yes. yes. But then it's, you see, yeah, the, the, the formula says annual coupon payment. So right. that means the six percent is an annual one. It's not a it's annual, an, it's not a yes. semi annual one. Yes, yes, it's annual. Yeah, that's why I, I got confused because I saw that the solution, if we're saying it's semi annual, then yeah. the question doesn't really click. It doesn't really make yes, sense. Yes. yes, yes, that's right. Um, I, I'll try and get more questions, or maybe I'll separate my questions on different slides going forward because it was also I myself um, confused you guys a bit. But 6% um, will always, your coupon rate is always annual. You times it by your face value and then you divide by two. Okay, thank you. Okay. What is the correct answer? So the correct answer, answer is I think divided, it's by 80. divided by 80. 80. 80. Not so 60. 60 divided by 800 gives you 7.5%. So remember. 60 divided by 800. 60 is your coupon, annual coupon. 800 is your bond price, and you get 7.5%. Yeah, but here we, we got a 30. No, so you're using, if you say 30, you're using semi annual. This um, formula says annual coupon payment, which is 60 then. Oh, annual, okay. Annual, yeah. You divide by two when um, you're calculating your, not your current yield, you're calculating your yield to maturity. The coupon rate is always given annually. Yes, it's paying 10, but here we're calculating current yield is a very rare question, but it's something we have to cover. But it's just a basic calculation. The main one, the main calculation you'll be doing is yield to maturity, which then you have to take into account semi-annual coupon payments. No, we don't say 7.5% times 2, because this is just your current yield, and it's already taken into account your annual coupon payment. If, let's move on, Yumna, because I think you have made some more complicated calculation in the front. Okay. All right. So um, don't feel uneasy because all the bond calculations, we're going to use the same method on the calculator. So you'll get enough practice on the calculator because we're going to now calculate yield to put and yield to call, right? So now with the yield to call, this allows the issuer, the person asking for money, to redeem the bond before maturity at a premium price. Can we mute? Can everyone mute? And so the value you are given to call the bond will be your new future value. So you're not going to get face value at the end. You are going to get the callable value, right? Which will be given to you. And with the yield to put is a rate calculated when the investor has the option to sell the bond before maturity, okay? So now your present value and future values will be affected. So let's look at an example of yield to call, right? A five-year 100 rand par value bond is paying semi-annual coupons and has a coupon rate of 20% and a yield to maturity of 11.94 it is selling for 129 rand 70 cents. You see it's selling at a premium. Calculate the yield to call if the bond is callable at 105 at the beginning of the year, of year three, right? So let's start here from the beginning, right? This is a five-year bond, but we're not worried about this period because we're doing a call at the beginning of year three, right? At the beginning of year three. So, 
the power value of the bond is going to be used, used to calculate the coupon payment, right? Which is semi-annual. So let's start off with the first variable, right? Let's start off here with the first variable given plain and simple, right? Which is your present value. The cur currently this bond is selling for 129 ren 70 cents. So we put it into our given information, right? The next item is your future value, right? So the bond is callable, right? At the beginning of year three, you can call the bond at 105, right? Okay, so you can, the issuer of the bond can pay, instead of 100 rand, he's going to pay 105 back to the investor, right? 105, this is what the bond is callable at, right? Now let's work out our payment, right? So our payment is 20% times by the face value, then divided by 2, right? So 20% times by the face value is 20 rand, right? Divided by 2, which gives you 10 rand. So we're receiving 10 rand for the first half of the year, and we're receiving 10 rand at the second half of the year. So we are receiving 10 rand semi-annually. Then we look at our period. Now it says at the beginning of year three, right? So how many years is that? If it's at the beginning of year three, year three is not included, so we've only covered two years, year one and year two, right? It's at the beginning of year three. So we have two years. After two years, it's callable. So we say two times by two, which is equal to four, right? And then remember to put your negative in front of present value so that we can calculate our yield to maturity. Okay, so our yield to maturity, if we, cal if we input all of this information, we'll calculate, we'll compute our yield to maturity, it will be 3.169, we times by two to get the annual yield to maturity, okay? Desiree wants you to explain again the PMT. Okay. What is PMT? Okay, so with regards to the payment, we always, the, pay, the formula for payment, which I think I'll add to the slides, is your face value or your par value of the bond times by the coupon rate. So we say 20% times by 100 rand is equal to 20 rand. 20 rand divided by 2 because we're receiving it over 2 payments. Twice a year we receive 10 rand to equal 20 rand. So that's how we calculate payment. Okay. She's happy. Okay. So is everyone with me? Did everyone try this on the calculator? Is everyone getting the right answer? Okay. So let's go here to yield to put, right? Calculate the yield to put of a five-year, 100 rand power value bond that sells at a discount of 82 rand 25 and is puttable at 93 rand 25 after three years. The bond has a coupon payment quarterly of 3 ren and the yield to maturity is 17.4%. So now we have a little bit of a different question. We have a little bit of a different way the question is asked, right? So we say calculate the yield to put of a 5 year 100 ren par value bond that sells at a discount of 82 ren 25, right? So our present value, the price is selling at 82 rand 25, right? It's puttable, right? It can be sold, the future value, after three years at 93 rand 25. So this is our future value. After three years, can be sold for 93 rand 25, right? In this one, the coupon payment is given 3 rand, quarterly 3 rand. So quarterly, Semi-annually is twice a year. Quarterly is 
four times per year. So you're receiving three ren four times per year. But basically our payment is given to us, right? Three variables given to us, right? Okay, now it's putable after three years. So we say three times by four. There's 12 payments in those three year periods. You're going to receive four, four, four over the three years, which is 12 periods, right? Don't forget to change your present value to negative so that you can compute your interest rate, right? If you compute your interest rate, it's going to be 4.5117 and you times it by four because annually we times by four. This is quarterly. This coupon payment is quarterly, which gives you 18.0. 467%. Okay, so basically here you're just changing your future value to the puttable or callable amount with yield to put and yield to call. Okay, so with the HP calculator, please uh, check your payments per year must be one. Don't change your payments per year because we're doing it manually by ourselves. OK, so that's good 18.05. Let's try a practice question of yield to call. OK, so calculate the yield to call of a 10% quarterly paying bond. So we're working with four payments per year with a power value of a thousand ren. The bond matures in 25 years time and here's the market price. It's currently selling for a thousand and ninety nine point ten and the yield to maturity is nine percent. It is callable by the issuer in 10 years time at the call price of one three four zero. Oh, right? Remember to replace your power value with the call price at the time of maturity with the call date, right? The market price and coupon payment remain the same. So write down from the beginning, present value, future value, payment, period, and we're gonna compute interest rate. Then you start filling in your first given amount. What is the bond currently selling for? Then we go to Yes. Mm, before we proceed with the question, uh, can I see? Can you please go back uh, to it to put because I get the wrong answer. Okay. All right. Let yes. me go back. Okay. Here we go. So, um, is this okay for you? Yes. Okay, so I'm getting the wrong answer. Where did you get? Where did you go wrong? If you look at your input values, have you written down your input values? Yes, I written down. Okay, remember this must be a negative over here. Negative, okay. which is your present value. This is what it's selling at currently. Yes. Okay, and then this is our future value, right? And our payment. This is all the given information in the question. Then our N we times by four because this is a quarterly payment. We're receiving this four times a year. So we times by 12 and you compute interest rate. And you get 4.511. You times by four because it's quarterly and you get this amount. No, I'm getting a one one double five per month. Okay. So um, can you check your calculator? We need to times by four, not divide by four. It, there is a end up, Yumna. Desiree okay. wants to talk. OK, Desiree. Hi, Yumna and everyone. Yes. Payment. Uh, we say the payment is quarterly of the rent. Why don't we multiply it by four? Because remember, with our payment, we always divide 
get our to get our payment per period, right? You see, we times our period. Our period is twelve periods over the three years, right? Because we get paid twelve times. And how much are we getting paid twelve times? Three ren twelve times. Yes, I, I uh, okay, three rand twelve times. Yeah. See, normally we're doing it manually. They'll give us the coupon rate. Then the coupon rate is annual. It will times it by the par value or the future or the par value of the bond. Then it's what we're receiving for the year. But they'll tell us it's semi-annual, so we'll divide it by two because we're getting paid twelve rand over two years is six rand twice. Six times. Thank two. you. Well. Got it. Okay. Thanks. All right, so back to the previous uh, lady I was speaking to. I'm not too sure. Um, we'll have to check your calculator. Um, yes, yes, I check it. Yeah. 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 Is a question there. Yeah, I'm fine it. now. Just... There's a end up. No. Okay. There's a question. Okay. Table. Yes, morning. Thank you so morning. much. Morning. How do you get in this calculation? How do you get below interest? How do you get? This 4.5117 that you must do, uh, 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 we must multiply by four. How do you get this amount? 4.5117. You must compute your interest rate. In your calculator, we're calculating the interest rate, so you must compute the interest rate. Starting from uh, 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 from PV, uh, from present value. Okay, so you put in in PV, you put in 82 rand 25 cents, and you make it negative, right? And then in your future value, it's puttable at 93 rand 25. So in the future, that's what you're going to get after three years. Yes. So we put 93 rand 25. In your payment, they've given us the payment in this question. So we have to read our question nicely. So they gave us the payment is quarterly three rand. Okay. Yes, and yes. then our period, we have 12 periods over this three years because it's a quarterly payment. We're getting paid 12 times. Um, the three rand is coming to us 12 times over the three years. We get four payments per year. And then you compute your interest rate and you're supposed to get 4.5117. Oh, no, thank you. Okay. I All right. It. Okay. Yes, I didn't put negative on my slide. Please excuse that. Please, everyone, put negative here. Negative notation. Okay, let's go on to question yield to call. Some of you have answered already. We'll just wait for the few of us to be on. So see, yeah, I've given you a clue. Replace par value with the call price like we did previously, right? The market price will be a present value and that's given and the coupon payment will remain the same. Okay, the coupon payment is not affected. It's going to be your coupon payment is your 10% paid quarterly. Okay, 10% times by your par value paid quarterly, right? Okay, so quarterly we divide by four. Okay, everyone seems to be getting a similar answer. Uh, let's go and have a look, right? So our future value was call price of 1340, right? Our present value was 1099.10. What's it currently selling for, right? Our payment is 100 rand divided by 4. So 10% times by 1,000 divided by 
4. By 4. 10% times by 1000 divided by 4. Our period is callable in 10 years time. So we say 10 times by 4. Okay. So we compute our interest rate. And you must get 2.5931 times 4, 10.37. So well done. It looks like everyone is on the same page as me. Okay, so our computer, our calculators are working and we're getting the gist of calculating bonds, right? So let's try this yield to put, right? Calculate a sample bond is 9.2% semi-annual bond, which is selling at 918.80. The yield to maturity is 10.4% with 12 years to maturity. The bond is putable at par, right? So par value is always a thousand rand, right? Putable at par in four years time. Calculate the yield to put, right? Remember, power will be a thousand rand. Okay, so nine point two percent is the coupon rate, and it's paid semi annually. So we say nine point two percent times by the par value, which is a thousand ren, and it's semi annual. So we divide by two. So our period is four years. Okay, so let's go to the answer, right? So our bond is currently selling for 918.80. The par value, it's puttable at par value, which is 1,000 rand. Our payment is 92 rand, which is 9.2% times by 1,000 rand, which is equal to 46 rand. Our period is four times by two, which is your semi-annual eight periods your interest rate is 5.90 we compute 5.9025 times by two which gives us 11.8 percent right so the reason why i put yield to maturity here is normally in the interpretation which i don't think you'll be asked they'll say is it should we put the bond because we're getting a higher rate here than the yield to maturity, then we say go ahead and put the bond. Okay? Here we go, right? So now the next section is spot and forward rates. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with forward rates because I think spot rates we need um, a good amount of time. And I see we're almost done. Uh, we only have 20 minutes left of the lesson. OK, so forward rate is a simple calculation. I um, just want to see if I have. Uh, OK, so I'm just going to skip to forward rates. Just want to give you this bit of information, right? So we're going to do spot rates at a different. Um, on a different lesson. Let's go and do forward rates for now, right? So a forward rate is the rate in between 
spot rates, right? So it's a rate you calculate in between two spot rates. Spot rates is your rate at the moment, okay? So let's do it with an example because that's the easiest way to um, explain forward rates, right? If there is a one year spot rate of 6% and a two year spot rate of 8%, the forward rate from now between year one and two is calculated as follows. So forward rate is equal to um, block brackets, you say 1.08, which is your rate in year two squared over your rate in year one which is to the power one, right? Minus one times by 100, right? So first what you do, you solve for 1.08 squared, which gives you 1.1664 divided by 1.06, right? You get the answer, negative one times 100 to get your rate, right? So this is how you calculate forward rates, right? So Sometimes you will be asked to calculate the forward rate of year three between year two and three. Then you will put year three here, the greater year on top, the smaller year at the bottom, right? Just depending where they're asking you to calculate the rate. And then you will calculate, you'll solve for the answer mathematically, right? Let's look at another question. Can you go back to the previous slide, please? I just need to understand something. No. Okay. So uh, how do you get 1.664? You say 1.08 squared? Some of us didn't do mathematics, eh? <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's fine. So that's why you must stop me and um, yeah. we can yeah. go through it slowly. Through. Yeah, can you just take me through how do you calculate it? Okay. It's one comma zero eight, and then how do the square? You is there a square function on your calculator? I'm using the HP one zero B one one. Okay. Um, I think the answer. Use the orange arrow <laughs> and the multiplying sign. Yeah. It will take you to the y x. And I think that calculator gives you a one point one seven. Okay, so give you the the you 1.17, right? Look on your calculator for decimal places. You have to put your decimal places on four because like um, for this module, you need to have uh, your calculation on four decimal places. So what you will do, you'll find if you look at your decimal places on your calculator, if I just look at the HP calculator, um, You just have to look for more information on these calculators and you have to increase your decimal place to four because if you're only getting 1.17 it means it's rounded off for you yeah, that's, that's yeah. but will will that still be right like no will it, it won't be right it won't your be right answer will be a little bit off you see you're gonna yeah. be working your um your entire examination is multiple choice so it might throw you a little bit off you know, by one or two uh, spaces. You know, you want to get the most accurate answer. So we've said from the beginning in this module, you'll keep your decimal places to four. So set your calculator now um, to four places and keep it at four places. Thank you, Yumna. Okay. All right. So um, you know what a squared means? It means 1.08 times by 1.08. But just when we go to the bigger ones, it's difficult to input it like that way. Um, mathematically, it means 1.08 times 1.08. If it's cubed, you put it three times. 1.08 times 1.08 times 1.08. That's what it means. Uh, but generally, we always have these functions on our calculator to make it a simple uh, question. To make it a sum to give you a simple answer. So your forward rate will always be your greater year over your smaller year and you compute for the answer mathematically. Okay. Mm. 
I'm going to go to the question on forward rates. Right, so here we got two forward rate questions, um, which I'm going to walk you through it, and then we're going to try and calculate, right? So the current uh, one year spot rate is 6%, right? The current two year spot rate is 9.2%, and the current three year spot rate is 14%, right? Oh, sorry. Calculate the forward rate two years from now, right? So two years from now, you're calculating the forward rate between years three and two. So you'll begin with year three and you say one plus your rate, 1.14 cubed, right? So you're gonna have an exponent of three on the top, cubed over year two, which is one, one plus 9.2%, 1.092 cubed. And you divide the two and you solve for your answer, right? So let's start with the first question and then we see if anyone can get some answers. Yeah, there's a question in the chat there uh, from Hopkins. Yes. He's asking if you if they ask you to calculate forward rate between nine success, successive rates, like forward rate the, for year two and year four, do you divide the difference? Uh, or oh, that question will never be asked. Okay, so long as we are on the same page, you will always have consecutive years between consecutive years. So they'll give you year three and year four, or year two and year three, or year one and year two. Yes, okay, thanks for that, uh, Dr. Nyamunda. Okay, is asking, no, is it one part of the equation? I don't know what she means. I don't know. Okay. All right, let me first answer this first question. If you calculate between year three and two, will the square root change to cube or is it always squared? No. So the year that you're using, that's the exponent you'll use. So if you're using year four and five, then your exponent will be four and five. So year five on the top, year four at the bottom. That's what your exponent is. That's why it's difficult to put a formula. The formula will have an X because it just depends on the year that you're using. As you'll see in this next question, you'll be doing uh, current six year spot rate and five year spot rate, and you'll be putting it to the power of six into the power of five. Pi is one part of the equation. Um, every number at the top, there's a one. The exponent is one, which means it's the same number. I'm assuming that's what you are asking. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I want to know why you didn't give us the full formula. Let's have one because we are a little bit confused because here yeah. in, your, in your example there is one comma zero eight. Why you you don't need us the full formula? Formula. Um, Dr. Niamunda, can you help me? Is there a formula for the forward rates? I just didn't come across one. It was just there, like... There is no... No, there's no formula. There's no formula. You just okay. have to know the steps. The steps, the, yeah. The spot rate and forward rates, you have to know the, the, the steps because there's no clear formula which you can follow. Only the steps. Oh, okay. okay. I, Dr. Niamunda, which, okay, which makes it difficult. That's why I was confused from. Which makes it difficult, but... Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no screen formula. Oh, okay. okay. So basically, it's um, look at it as a um, you know word problems. We used to do word problems. So you always put your greater year over the smaller year. They'll tell you between year five and six. Then you put year six at the top, year five at the bottom, right? And it's it's once you get used to it, practice is the best thing. Um, you'll understand it and. Um, you know, it there's was not easy. Up. It's not a very difficult calculation, this forward rates. There's the end up, Yumna. Okay, yes. No, uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that. In fact, for spot rate, if you refer to page 228 on the prescribed yes. book, there is a key yes. instruction on how you calculate forward rate. Spot, forward I rate. Mean, yeah, the, I mean, the, the spot rate. The spot rates, okay. Spot so rate. spot rates, there is a formula which I have included on these slides, but spot rates, I wanted to spend a little bit more time with you guys 
Uh, these are forward rates. It's a simple calculation. It comes yeah. supposed to come yeah. after spot rates, yeah. but I decided to cover it today while we had a little bit of time. Mm. Spot rates I need to cover um, over a good 30 minute uh, session and we need to do a lot of practicing on it so that you guys can. Um, I don't want to leave you guys confused um, with the spot rates because it's a lengthy calculation. It's not difficult. It's just yeah. length. OK, yes. so let's look at uh, the answers so that we can explain better on is. Um, so if we look at the first question, right? So it was between year three and year two, right? The year three spot rate was 14 percent. The year two spot rate was 9.2 percent. So we say 1.14 to the power three. Right, has everyone? Oh, I hope everyone's OK to get this answer with the calculator. And then we say 1.092 squared. At the bottom, right? And then you divide the two and then you subtract one because we work with board mass. We first do division before we do subtraction, right? Subtract one. Once you've divided, you'll get 1.2423, negative 1, 24.23, which most of you got right so let me go back here so you guys can try the next question right suppose the current six year spot rate is eight percent now we're working with six years and the current five year spot rate is seven percent what is the one year forward rate in five years right so this is the forward rate between year five and six so we begin with year six at the top so we say one plus 8%, 1.08 to the power 6 over 1.07 to the power 5, minus 1 times by 100, right? Try that out and then we can look at the answer. Okay, we've already got quite a few answers here in the chat and everyone's looking like they're on the same level. Um, so at least we are covered with spot rates, with forward rates. OK. OK, so just waiting a few more seconds and then I'm going to. Solution number two, right? So 1.08 to the power 6 is 1.5869. 1.07 to the power 5 is 1.4026, right? Once you divide, you subtract 1 and you get 13.14. Well done. So everyone seemed to have gotten the right answer. So it seems like uh, the calculation can be easily um, tackled. OK. All right. Um, you can work with four decimal places. One, four, one, nine, that's the right answer. Sometimes when I, um, when I get questions from different sources, they don't always follow this four decimal places, but you guys please keep to four decimal places. That's what uh, Mr. Matsoma will be, how he will be assessing you guys here in this module on investment management. Kuda is a question, Yumna. Okay. Okay, so yes. for the for the question for forward and what you call it spot rates. Yes. Does it does it come that simple or because normally the exam they try to twist and stuff uh, question. Yes. Does so, do they examine it just like as you are giving it to us or they okay. try to twist it and stuff? No, so you know where we get confused mainly with is spot rates. Forward rates is always a simple calculation like this. But spot rates is a lengthy calculation. And then like uh, one of the other uh, students said that we struggle with mathematics. You know, most of us have been at school many years ago. So the, the thing about spot rates is once you substitute into the formula, it's difficult to do the algebra equation. But, but I, I Cover. Um, I wanted to cover this in depth or like go through it with you nice and slowly. So hopefully we can make a session to accommodate for the spot rates, which you generally 
which most uh, students find more challenging. Um, I do have all the information here on the slides, which I will post, but I will have to present it at another time, unfortunately. OK. OK. okay. So um, I'd like to end the lesson off there. Before I end off, I see that Mr. Matsoma, he put a um, an announcement on the exam. Generally, after all our sessions, everyone has been asking about the exam. So the exam date was finalized for the 23rd of September and it will be taking place on the My UNISA site. So it's not like your normal UNISA examinations. How this exam works is exactly like the assignment. How the assignment opened up on your My UNISA investment management page, um, it will open up as like an additional assignment and uh, it will be open for four hours. However, it's a two and a half hour paper and um, you will submit it just like how we were doing the assignments. And I, I, yes. Mm, uh, I want to know about this uh, module because it's not appearing on my timetable. So we want to know because we're supposed to apply for a study leave which, where yeah. we can. So uh, that's what uh, I'm just addressing at the moment is that um, According to announcement, if you just check the announcement on the main site, Mr. Matsuma confirmed the date to be 23rd September, which mm -hmm. was the original exam date, but it's not on the um, UNISA exam site. I'm not too familiar with the examination site, but for the last four years, we've been doing the exam on the My UNISA site. It will be done on the 23rd of September. Um, I will confirm the times with you guys, but keep the 23rd of September open on your calendar for your study leave and um, for your examination leave. And, um, you know, in my past experience, I just wanted to emphasize to you guys, when you're keeping this date open, make sure that you have uh, a good secure internet line, you know, um, because most students um, had a, have technical difficulties in submitting this exam. And um, there were two main problems was the internet connection. So um, even if you have to budget in or make sure you go um, to a place with a good secure internet connection, please make the necessary arrangements. And also please make sure you're taking your exam on a um, computer on a computer or a laptop as opposed to your cell phone and a tablet because sometimes um, the site opens differently on mobile site it opens differently on mobile sites and some information uh, might not appear the same as a desktop you know uh, in terms of submission and if you um, I just want you guys to be well prepared so that you can submit easily on the day and not have problems on that day and then your exam. Um, you know, we can't always assist with every technical difficulty because we're asking you to be prepared in advance. OK. There's a hand up for you now, Tabo. Yes. OK. Yeah, sorry, uh, just one question. I know it might not be in your department, uh, but with yes. the new normal around these online examinations, the challenge that you're picking up is uh, you can't go back to 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 the the once you go next you can't yes. go back to the previous question and before you know you used to go take the, the ones you know first and try to go back to the ones that struggling with so i don't know if it's something that can be done around <clears throat> uh, going back to past question like, like if we skip a page yeah you find that you, you can't really go to the previous page that that's a big of bit of a concern i don't know who can help us with that okay so um you know, we'll try and make sure that the site is uh, working efficiently, especially on that day. But um, my best, uh, my suggestion to you guys and what I've also said previously is that uh, when you're struggling like this year, I don't know to go to the previous or to go forward, um, try to do a bit of a screenshot or email us just like a proof of what you're going through. But mainly when you can't go previous and forward, it tends to be like something to do with your internet connection. 
but it can also be the site being flooded. Um, so we'll just have to have a look at that and we'll put more information on it. But if you're having a problem where your assignment doesn't want to submit or the page just, uh, you know, it comes into an error page, my advice to you was is screenshot, screenshot with a time base and email uh, me or the lecturer immediately and just let us know. But obviously on the exam date, we generally don't have much communication, but at least then uh, we can assist you with some sort of proof. <clears throat> The, there's a very good suggestion there, you now on in the chat, which says at uh, the top there's a table of contents. So I think if you click at the table of contents at the top, it can yeah. show you all the questions. Then you can choose the one which you didn't that attempt. Okay, all right. So that's a good suggestion. That's a solid suggestion. That's a really thanks, Anna. That's a really good suggestion. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Anna. So um, yeah, that's great. If uh, we can all help each other out. That's why we're encouraging you guys to engage on the discussion forum. It's a nice platform where we all can learn. And yeah, you can ask any of your questions on there. And yeah, there's a question, Yumna. Yes? Do you still have two attempts for the exam? Uh, I'm not too sure. Usually, the previous years we had two attempts, but I will confirm with you in an announcement on the main site. Um, I'm not too sure if I read if there's two attempts. Usually we are given two, we give two attempts for the exam, but I'm not too sure if they've changed things this year. There's a question from Teboho there. Yes. Tiboho. The end is up. Okay, yes, Teboho. <laughs> Yes. Hello. All right. Okay. Um, we will be. Um, I will. We will try and get some extra practice questions. If I have any previous assignments and solutions, I'll try and upload it because the best thing you can do is um, do practice questions uh, to prepare yourself for the exam. So, like we advised, Mr. Matoma advised at a previous uh, online 